Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi Battles. I said episode again, it's not an episode, it's just a video. Jesus Christ. Anyway guys, welcome back. Today we're having a battle against Alex. Not the same Alex who was battling the other week though, so... Um, yes, I'm using my uh, Garchomp, Greninja, Exodrill, uh, Sylveon, Charizard, Manamart, same as been used in the past few battles. And Alex has got a good mix of, you've got Zapdos in there, a nice Avalug, never seen that been used before. And I see a Dusclops, so I'm guessing that's holding, holding an Eevee Light. So let's get going and we can have a battle. Let's do this. TikTok, TikTok, there we are. Okay, there's Alex coming out, or issuing a challenge rather. So, he, I guess I went from sending my guard trap at first, as I explained last, in the last life about, oh, I do like sense starting off my guard trap, because that's just the way I'm at, the way I am. Obviously, Avalug comes out, so Avalug's a big threat to guard trap, because it's ice typing, so I switch out and send out my Malamar, because it has super power, which will just do some decent damage to Avalug there. Avalug goes for the Avalanche, which obviously would have taken guard trap out in one, most probably. My Squidette, my, 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 my Malamar, I always forget to say the actual name. My Malamar takes it pretty well though because it is a defensive Pokemon. He sends out his Dusclops. Uh, at this point, I don't know if I actually knew about Dusclops being used for Eviolite. Um, I tried for Superpower. He probably predicted the Superpower, which is why I switched out. So then I go for another Air, Night Slash. He takes it very well because of the uh, Eviolite there. And then goes for a Will O Wisp, which is obviously going to reduce my effectiveness for Malamar greatly because it's a physical attacker. Um, so unfortunately, that's there. I then withdraw my Malar, knowing it's not going to do much damage in it otherwise, and send my Garchomp out, because my Garchomp knows Crunch. He then uses Shadow Sneak, which, you know, it's going to do some damage to me, <laughs> obviously. Doesn't do a huge amount of damage though, even though, it, even though it's a critical hit, so. My Rough Skin obviously hurts uh, Dusclops, which is actually going to help me out a bit. And then I use the Crunch, I don't know if it takes him or not, we'll have to see. As always with my Wi-Fi battles, I'm not sure. Yep, doesn't quite take him out, and reduces his defense as well. And then he uses a Will O Wisp on my Garchomp, which I avoid. I'm like, whew, whew. Because uh, obviously that would have rendered my Garchomp almost useless as well. He then sends out his Gliscor, predicting I'm going to use another Crunch. Because obviously Gliscor is a defensive Pokemon. So that thing takes it very well, actually. Uh, he got poisoned by its Toxic Orb, because it's obviously a Poison Hill Gliscor. So I switch out now and go out to my Greninja, who has Ice Beam. He then goes for a... what does he go for? He goes for a knockoff. I was predicting an Ice Fang there against Garchomp, but rather it was a Ice Beam. He knocks off the expert battle I was carrying, just because uh, that's what it was when PLC gave it to me. So um, he then withdraws his Gliscor and sends out Golva, who is a Golvanch, I'm guessing. No, it's actually Helidisk. I didn't know. <laughs> so obviously I hit it with an Ice Beam there, which is going to do some decent damage. Um, you know, not a huge amount of damage because it's not super effective, but some decent damage. See, at least half damage, so yeah. I then go for a Dark Pulse rather than uh, another Ice Beam. Don't quite know why, just figured a Dark Pulse would be pretty good. Um, and takes out the Heliolisk just. I don't know if the critical hit actually mattered at all, but we took it out nonetheless. He then sends out his Heracross, figuring because it just turned into a Dark type, he's going to be able to get a, a good move off first. But unfortunately, Gringa being very speedy uh, can change its type with Proteum. So I go for the Scold. And does, you know, doesn't do shoot my damage, but fortunately for me, I get the burn now, which is going to obviously reduce his effectiveness. Uh, see, I probably would have died about that burn, um, you see. So his defense and special defense then fall, and me being faster, obviously I can take advantage of that defense and special defense loss. So I go for another scold, hoping that, you know, I can take it out, and indeed I do, thanks to the special defense fall. So yeah, generally I think the burn was what uh, kept my Greninja alive there. He then sends out his Zapdos, so I'm like, ooh, I never really faced a legendary bird before, so I didn't know quite what, where I was standing or you know what to expect. So I switched out and sent out my Exodrill, because it has Rock Slide and it's immune to electric type attacks. And obviously my Greninja is water type, generally. <laughs> uh, he goes for a substitute rather than just going straight for the attacking move, so that's that. I, he then withdraws his Zapdos actually, so gets rid of the substitute then and sends out his Dusclops again, just to sort of take damage there, because it has Levitate, no, it has Frisk, sorry, not Levitate. Um, so I use the Sword Stance, just sort of took that turn to, I was, I was saying, okay, I'm going to need, this, I'm gonna need a, a attack boost to be able to take out the Zapdos. So then go for the Rock Slide here, just to take out that um, Dusclops. I wasn't quite sure if it was Levitating at all, I, I didn't really know, so I just went for the Rock Slide just to be safe. He then sends out his Avalug. Obviously, Rock Slide is going to be super effective against that. So, um, I figured, okay, I'm going to go for the Rock Slide, see if I can take it out in one. We'll just have to see, because Avalug is pretty beasty, you know. Just look at it, it's a Glacier, yeah? Does less than half damage, even with my attack boost. So, very, very beasty. It's probably got maximum defense and maximum health points in there. So, then I take out my extra drill, think, okay, um, he's probably going to take me out of an Avalanche or similar next. So, I send out my Sylveon. 
because I, I don't know, why did I summon Sylveon out? I don't know. <laughs> he goes for an avalanche. And my Sylveon isn't defensive, it's special defensive. So it does take a bit of damage from that. So Avalog then restores some health points now, as you can see what's left over again. And then I go for the Moonblast because that's my strongest move generally because I get stabbed from it. Uh, so it does, you know, it's a Avalog obviously isn't a special defensive Pokemon, so I figured, you know, I'd bring my Sylvia out, Sylvia out, Sylvia out because it has a special attack. So, yeah, that's what I did. He then sends his Glyco out to use Earthquake. I figure, okay, if I can take an Avalanche from an Avalog, I can take an Earthquake from this, but I don't quite because it's a critical hit, so that takes on my Sylvia. So then I switch over to. Because it's probably, I think this is, yeah, it's a defensive Glyco, not an Anif not an a oh, I can't speak. It's not an offensive glide score, so I figured I could take it from it, but no. So he goes for the Protect, rather than uh, being victim or falling victim to my Ice Beam on this first turn, because obviously that's what he's predicting, or at least seeing what I have, rather a, a Scold or an Ice Beam. So then I give the Ice Beam, and I think that probably takes him out in one, uh, because glide score is defensive, not special defensive, so unfortunately it's got nothing against it. So it was a critical hit as well, so I don't think the critical hit would have mattered though, so. So, and Zapdos comes out. Again, obviously uh, with its pressure, I go for a switch because I don't want to you know, take too much damage from it, etc. I send my Excadrill again, I can't say names sometimes. Obviously, um, you know, he then goes for his Thunderbolt rather than Substitute this time, so that's a good thing I switched out really. He then goes for a Roost, just to roost up some of the damage he lost. He, how did he take damage? Substitute, that's it. So yeah, obviously Substitute and Roost, so I have to watch out for that really. He then avoids my Rock Slide, so... Um, Stupid people. He avoids my rock slide, so I go for the swords dance, um, and go he's sort of substitute him now. Sorry, someone just walked into my room and just watching me record a video. It's like, what are you doing? Leave. He gets for roost, um, to roost up behind his substitute, so he gains some more health points to sort of just get back what the substitute was doing. That's why I use the swords dance, because I knew one I had to take out the substitute in one turn, otherwise I was pretty screwed. And then two I had to take out the Zapdos in one turn as well, because you know that would otherwise he just use the substitute or roost up again. He then goes for the Toxic, which doesn't affect me. I think it's probably a misclick there. Um, otherwise, I don't know what he was doing. And I go for the Rock Slide, and with the Swords Dance, that Zapdos is gone. So, it was generally a good match there. A good game, Alex. Especially with the Zapdos there. Nice Zapdos um, sort of method, but unfortunately, didn't have nothing on my extra drill. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do like, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye, my friends.